Do you remember last year when the president and vice president went around saying this same thing more than 80 different times? None of you will have your taxes raised. Anyone making less than $400,000 will not see a penny in taxes raised. You'll actually see your standard of living go up and your costs go down. Well, guess what? Not only did your standard of living not go up, it's actually decreased massively, but your taxes have gone up regardless of whether you earn $400,000 a year or less than that. All of your taxes, if you are in the US, have gone up massively or have from the 1st of January this year gone up massively. And these are what we call stealth taxes. So you don't see this directly on your income taxes or those uh, taxes associated with your income taxes, but you see it in other areas which are unseen. So what am I talking about here? Well, let me go over to my shared screen. And these were the taxes that I found that have been increased as of the 1st of January in the USA. So there is a coal tax, a natural gas tax, and a crude oil tax. So these are all energy-based taxes. You then have a stock market tax and a corporate income tax. Now you might say, well, none of these affect me, Neil. I, I don't, you know, don't mine coal or have anything to do with natural gas or crude. Well, actually you do because coal is what is used for electricity generation, as is natural gas. Um, crude, that's for your gasoline and, and other transport costs for things like food and products and things like that. Stock market tax affects um, a huge amount of Americans. And the corporate income tax, if you don't think those companies are going to pass those taxes on to you, you've got another thing coming. But this is just the start of the taxes that are going to be passed on to you. And we're going to look at later on in the video, this, this $31.5 trillion national debt that the US now has, and the spike that I don't know why people don't seem to be talking about this and how the United States is now 13th worst in the world. I mean, look at this, Venezuela, Sudan, Lebanon, Eritrea, Libya, Bhutan. I mean, these, these are the only countries worse than the USA at the moment, which doesn't say a lot. Uh, so let's have a look at this. With this law, the American people won and the special interest lost. That's what Biden actually came out with and said when he passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which I've covered on previous videos, is nothing of the sort. It will not reduce inflation. And we actually have the evidence here, Congressional Budget Office, US Congress. So let's take a look at what I, I want to show you here. So they did an assessment then. Uh, of and again we're going to jump around a little bit just so I can tie all of this up for you today but how would enacting the bill affect inflation so remember this is called the inflation reduction act so how would it affect inflation in 2022 well it says here in 22 it would have a negligible effect so really nothing what about 2023 uh, it says in calendar year 2023 inflation would probably be between 0.1 percent lower and 0.1% higher. So again, no change whatsoever. So this is what made me laugh when I actually read the report. So let's get down to the net effect then. Here we go on page five of the report. It states this, enacting the bill would affect economic activity and inflation beyond 2023. However, the CBO has not evaluated those effects. Can you see how crazy this is? The CBO have not evaluated the effects of this Inflation Reduction Act. So that tells me, well, various things, but very simply, that this act was nothing to do with reducing inflation. They just used this very clever name because they knew that the American people would like it. Oh, inflation is extremely high, the highest we've seen in decades. Well, look, the president is saying that we're going to pass this uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So obviously this is great. Let's make sure that all of the politicians vote for it and get it passed when actually it's nothing to do with reducing inflation at all. Now, as we go through the article, then the Inflation Reduction Act will also fund new investments focused on boosting green energy. So there's your key on what this is really about and reducing polluting gas emissions. It will be the largest US public investment against the climate crisis. Okay, it is expected to cut polluting emissions by 
40% by 2030. The US $740 billion IRA is the United States' largest ever investment in climate and energy programs and would be paid for with a minimum tax of 15% on companies with profits of more than $1 billion. But look at this statement here that I've highlighted in yellow. I'm keeping my campaign promise. No one earning less than $400,000 a year will pay a penny more in federal taxes, Biden said. Well, of course that's not true. I've just showed you right away why that is not true with these new taxes, but we'll cover that more in a moment. We're cutting the deficit to fight inflation by having the wealthy and big corporations finally begin to pay part of their fair share. Now, I find that interesting as well. You heard me sort of pause as I said it because I was reading and thinking it was going to say finally pay their fair share, but it doesn't say that. It says finally begin to pay part of their fair share. In other words, these companies are not gonna pay their fair share. So I started looking into this whole green plan for you as well. And it's called IRA and Green Power Partners. So this is where all of the new taxes and incentives and things like that are gonna be raised against these large corporations. And whenever I hear this, I'm always skeptical. It sounds fishy to me, so let me look into it. So that's what I did. IRA incentives reduce renewable energy costs for organizations like Green Power Partners, businesses, and then all these others, but state and local government. How they take advantage of tax credits. Hmm, okay, well, let's see what these incentives and tax credits are. Uh, also grants and incentives to reduce air pollution. And this sounds great on the face of it. Who doesn't want to reduce air pollution if you live in a big smoggy city? But then when you start actually going through this and looking at who the, here we go, Green Power Leadership Awards. So who were, in their opinion, the best in green power? Who got these awards? Number one, Google. So Google was the best in green power. Okay. T-Mobile, mm. Boston University, Dane County, Microsoft. And then as soon as I came over here, I saw this. Microsoft, since 2014, so eight years, has used 100% renewable green power in the United States. Yeah, I call BS on this right away. There is no way in the last eight years that they only used renewable energy. There's just no way. They would have had to, at some point, use some form of fossil fuel-based energy. Who else have we got? Starbucks, University of California, uh, another California, a bank. I mean, honestly, if you believe these are the most green energy companies in the United States, then I have got a bridge to sell you. So I just find it funny he's saying that these big companies are gonna pay their fair share. They're not. All of these incentives and everything else, they're just offsetting their taxes. They're not actually paying their taxes. That's what big corporations do. They do not pay their taxes. And the next thing here is he's talking about this uh, $369 billion investment to strengthen your energy security. Well, again, that's just not true at all. You've probably got some of the worst energy security that you've had in decades in the USA. And we can use loads of examples here from the natural gas to the, to the coal, to the oil, right through to the diesel, which if you remember my video before about the crisis, it's still on this 21 day rolling supply. And that is all the USA has, 21 days of diesel. It's just a crisis waiting to happen. If something happens to a few of those refineries, you're down even shorter. It's just, it, honestly, it is a ticking time bomb. So what they are saying really reminds me of George Orwell 1984 book, where everything is the complete opposite. So they're saying the historic bill has now, because this was obviously written in the past, has now lowered the cost of energy. Well. No, it's increased the cost of energy dramatically. The only one thing you can probably say, which I've highlighted in green here, that it has done is lowered the cost of prescription drugs. But Americans get absolutely ripped off anyway with prescription drugs. <laughs> Reduce the deficit. It's not gonna do that. It's gonna increase the deficit. Make the largest corporations pay their fair share of taxes. Again, it's not gonna do that either. 
He then goes on to say, we are in a season of substance. Again, you're definitely not. Uh, today offers further proof that the soul of America is vibrant. He's obviously got a, a speech writer to uh, put all this together. The future of America is bright. I would say the opposite. I would say the future of America right now is very dark and unpredictable. We don't exactly know what's going to happen. And the promise of America is real and just beginning. Well, no, I'd say it's uh, somewhat near the, the final stages. And I really love the USA, so I, I think it's just a, an absolute tragedy what's happening to your country, and I really mean that. Now, the other thing that they've been putting out is all of this, which is, again, just rhetoric, it's propaganda, it's not correct. So they're saying that this is the revenue that they're going to raise, $739 billion dollars but how can you say you're going to raise all of this revenue to cut public debt when you're raising the revenue from the public in the first place so then they have this you know total deficit reduction 300 billion dollars it's not you're not going to reduce this deficit here uh, and and of course we've got this 31.5 trillion national debt you're not going to reduce this deficit by moving funds from one place to another and it's interesting when you look at the media outlets and what they're saying because I would expect the left-wing media outlets to be, you know, supporting this and saying how great it is, but that's not actually the case. So we, you know, we've got both right-wing and left-wing media here, and they're both attacking it. So they're saying that this uh, corporate income tax hike will be passed on to households. I agree. The cost of this tax increase will be borne by working families in the form of higher prices, fewer jobs, and lower wages. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the fewer jobs aspect because I think it's just going to get passed on and even when you look at this 27,000 jobs when you compare this to the USA is not a lot you're going to see a lot more jobs lost than that just from the coming recession and we've already seen now with this white collar recession hitting the tech industry which if you remember the forecast I made that that would be hit first because this will be a white collar recession this time around but the other problem is we've had these forecasts now that almost 50% of the tax will be borne by manufacturing, and that will be somewhat disastrous for the economy. So look, even the New York Post is talking about how bad this is going to cost the middle class in taxes, and you wouldn't expect this from the New York Post. But at least we had this very small win in regards to the IRS. Well, somewhat of a small win. If you remember the video I made here, over a million views on this one, where I talked about this new $600 threshold come in on January the 1st. Well, unfortunately, that did come, but the win is that they weren't able to get all of these new agents to chase down the public and, and collect all of this new revenue, even though they say, oh, no, no, the agents weren't going to be doing any of that, right? Yeah, of course they weren't. So the win is that the new IRS employees will be focused on customer service, IT improvements, rather than hiring the agents. But let's just wrap up then with this issue about the debt ceiling then. And, and again, it's so funny when you look at all the different, because I look at both left-wing media, right-wing media, because not that I really listen to any of it. I think it's all a load of garbage when you've got, you know, some of these big Republican and Democrat media companies owned by the same parent group. But what they're talking about in this article is all about this debt ceiling and how they just want to raise the debt ceiling without any responsibility whatsoever. And that is absolutely crazy. And I want to just give you an example here of how big of a problem this is and how easy it is to solve this problem. Let's pretend that you have a household income of $50,000 per year, but you're spending $75,000 per year. What do you think you should do here? Is this really difficult? Is this complicated? Is it hard to figure out? Well, no, it's not. What you do is you cut spending down. That is what you do. If you haven't got the income coming in, then you haven't got the income coming in. The obvious thing to do is to cut spending. But the US government doesn't want to do that. It just wants to keep spending more and more and more and getting more and more into debt with no intention of ever paying it off. Well, that is just irresponsible and it's ridiculous, actually, if you think about it. And this is what really surprises me. Before the 08 crisis, the national debt was $9 trillion. That's what it was, $9 trillion. 
Now you look at what this debt level is now. The total national debt is 31.5 trillion. And I've said before, this will never be paid off. And it baffles me when I get these comments saying, Neil, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand, Neil. The government will just print the money to pay that off. They don't have to pay it off. They'll just keep printing and printing to pay it off. They could print it. Someone actually commented, how ridiculous is this? They could pay it off tomorrow if they just printed it or they could just cancel it out. No, they couldn't. They couldn't. I mean, this is how brainwashed a lot of people have become now that they actually believe these things. Not only could you not just print that 31 and a half trillion tomorrow to pay it off, but even if they did, and, and where would they even send that money to? This is the thing. Let's say that a lot of it went into the economy. Do you realize what would happen to inflation if you just dumped, let's just say, 10 trillion into the economy tomorrow? Give it 12 to 18 months, you would see inflation like you've never seen before in your lifetime. So this is the problem that the US has right now. Their debt to GDP is 129%. This is completely unsustainable. And there aren't many countries worse than the USA in the entire world right now. If you take the, the world as having anywhere from 200 to 215 countries, and you see where the US ranks, it's 13th, unlucky 13th on the list. And what's Janet Yellen's response or plan? Well, we'll just have to delay payments to federal employees, retirement plans, and, and all sorts of other things, social security. So hold on, people who have actually done the work, they've done the work and now they expect their payment. The plan is not to pay them or to delay that and then to cause them issues with their credit rating, missing mortgage payments and debt payments and all sorts of other things. And oh, I know, let's not pay out social security and all these other things to people who it's their money, it's their entitlement. This is how crazy things have gotten now in the US. And now you could probably understand why I made a decision not to move to the US when I finally got my visa through. And uh, I, I decided to go elsewhere instead. Honestly, I love the USA, I love the US people. I just think that there are certain things going on in the country now, which is crazy that I can't even speak about it because of all the censorship that uh, now exists. And it's just completely destroying the country. There are, there are so many issues, both present and that are coming in the near future, that um, it's not looking good, my friends. It's not looking good at all. But uh, thanks for watching today. I appreciate you as always. I hope the video helped a little bit so you can understand what is actually going on. And I'll see you again this week with the next video. Take care. God bless.